I'm Christina, welcome to Soundwave TV. We're backstage at the Sydney Soundwave Festival with the lovely folks from Dillinger Escape Plan. It's very like a down home American word. You guys yeah. would say hey, what? Folks. Mates. Yeah, oh, cunts. Lovely cunts. Yeah, you guys are, yeah. you, <laughs> it's all like about you guys. Every insult is a is a compliment. You yeah, know? No, that's the way it works. You yeah. Sick cunt is yeah. a compliment. Yeah. I like as. I like the as thing too. Like, like that was fucking shit as. Or like sick as you know, like, fuck yeah it was. So you've just gotten married, and you brought your girlfriend out. I, I have, yes. Yeah, cool. I hear she's in a video with um, Taylor Momsen actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Taylor was a big fan of hers, so yeah. uh, which is strange because Taylor was like was like 17 years old at the time, you know, and wow. shouldn't be watching that kind of stuff. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and Taylor is actually really rad, and she's got a great voice too. Yeah, so. she really does. So yeah, we've actually all ended up becoming friends, and and uh, we we haven't had any three ways yet. Oh, so, but you know, the night is young. Yeah, the night is young. Yeah. yeah. Well, I actually met my wife at Roskilde Festival. Yeah. In Denmark, she was a stagehand. Awesome. So she was hot and carrying amplifiers. I was like, I need someone who could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of reading about your whole um I'm. Yeah, the whole shrooming tale and stuff, and I know you've probably talked about it at length. But do yeah, you think the first time that we've actually ever talked about it in <laughs> in anything together? Yeah. So yeah. it's interesting, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought like one of the things I I think is interesting about that is if you can have different values mm. as a, as people, I think it's it's conducive to good music making. I think we're starting to learn that. I think that there's no way for a band all to always have the same values exactly mm. and the same views on everything and everything like that. And so I think it's important for people to realize that what makes up a band is a group of individuals. We're not Nine Inch Nails. It's not like some dude that makes everything and hires a band. You know, we're a band. We're real, you know, and it's that, that dynamic. And Greg and I especially are passionate people and stuff like that. So I think it makes for a really good, interesting uh, situation for making music. Yeah, definitely. Are you guys are you guys sort of writing at the moment or thinking about it or yeah. ideas germinating or Yeah, he I mean, he's pretty far along, further along than I than I realized. It seems like 3 3 months ago we didn't have a single song written and now there's like three or four tingle. pretty full ideas in the can, you know. Actually, starting to feel a tingle. Oh. Like you know when you go up really high and your anus gets a little ding. Yeah. You're like, "Oh, I'm scared, but it feels good and I don't know where it's going, but I like it." I know it's hard to put music into words, but can you? Skim do 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 Skim do 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 Anthony Kiedis does it quite well too. Yeah. So how how did you um meet Serge? Serge? Yeah. Oh, Serge. Well, we played with System of the Down ten years ago, almost exactly. We did a European tour. The toxicity of our city just come out, <laughs> and they had that song Areolas in the Guy. I love that one. So nice drum tech gave Calculating Infinity to Darren. Darren got, became Back a fan, away. and then they asked us to go on tour. And it was amazing, because at that point, basically all we had out was like Calculating Infinity, and it, which sounds like, you know, a mess to most people. It just sounds like garbage. So we got to play that record in front of like the most biggest popular radio band in the world at that point. And all these little mall kids were coming out just like, Ugh. Like when we started playing, I think we got loud. at one point the boos were so loud I couldn't even I had to put my ear up to my amp to play because I couldn't even hear. It was like Ireland or something. There was one of the shows that we literally could not hear ourselves playing because the boos were so loud. <laughs> we did. We played in front of 12,000 people in Italy and sold two T-shirts. And then afterwards we walked around. Me and Greg walked around handing out stickers. And everyone who got them were like, oh, that band was horrible. They suck not it's thinking. because we had never played a show that big, so we're like, in our heads, we're like, if we even sell a t-shirt to like 2% of these people, then we're going to sell like 1,000 t-shirts. And we got the sheet at the end of the night. We were like, two? Somehow like, we wait, wait, we, made, we sold $40 in merch? <laughs> there were 10,000 people here, you know? Like, Didn't someone throw a chicken leg at you? I someone threw a chicken sandwich. <laughs> someone threw a chicken sandwich on stage. We were really hungry. I was really hungry. I stopped singing stopped and just ate it. Around. Because they didn't appreciate what we were saying anyway. Max Cavalier actually said that working with you was one of his favorite collaborations oh, of all right. time. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys have been doing some stuff. What's what's sort of the latest on that yeah. sort of thing? I mean, that came about, like, it, it, I, it's, it's so weird. He just asked me, I met him at a Deftones show. I didn't meet him, but I saw him at a Deftones show in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, hey, I'm actually in L.A. right now recording a record. Do you want to come? do a song with me, and I thought he was just going to have the whole song already written, and he was going to be like, here's your verse, you know, sing it. And uh, when I showed up at the studio, he was like, here's the song, and he played it, and there's no vocals. And I was like, oh, all right. Like, what's the deal with the vocals? He's like, we're going to write them. And I'm like, when do they have to be written by? He's like, today. <laughs> and I'm like, when do they have to be recorded by? He's like, today. I'm like, wait, well, what? Like, I'm like, we got to go get a notepad right now. Let's go. And, like, yeah. put it on loop. And we just sat there and with a notepad, and it's crazy, because at the time, I was like, in such hustle mode. It's like, shit, this has to be good. We got to get it done now. And after the fact, I was like, you know what? That is kind of crazy that I was sitting next to Max Cavalier with a notepad 
and like being like, no, 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 no this is going to be better. Let's say it like this. And then he'd be like, no, this is better, you know? And like, uh, so, <laughs> so, and it turned out we really had a good time. And then, uh, you know, you kind of do the whole, like, we should do this again type of thing. And then uh, I was like, fuck it, we should do a whole album, you know, like, just because I get really excited really easy. And, uh, <laughs> Can't tell me. And uh, like a couple months later, you know, he kind of called me and was just like, you know, if you, you know, or like, you know, if you want to do that album, still joking around, you know, and I, I really was thought he was joking. And I kept it going, you know, I was just like, yeah, you let me know if you want me to come out to Phoenix, I'll come out anytime. We'll start writing, you know, and then we went out and just sat for like four or five days with guitars of various tunings and stuff like that and just like you know wrote you know guitar parts and lyrics and all this stuff and ended up with like 20 odds and ends and then we recently just stripped it down to four you know songs worth of stuff it's and, like an uh, ep kind of thing or? yeah yeah well i don't know you know so we don't really don't know what we're gonna do with it now we have four completed songs uh this kid dave village that used to play in the mars volta is playing drums and uh so now we're kind of deciding like you know do we put this out or do we write some more songs and make it a full length? And I think we're both leaning towards making it a full length. And then uh, I, I, don't, I really don't know what we're going to do. We, we like the songs a lot. It's completely different from what either of us have ever done. So it'll be cool. And I just like the idea of collaborating. It's Collaborations are fun. And you learn something about yourself. You grow a little bit as a writer. You've got some collaboration things going on with the guys from Mastodon yeah, yeah. and James Addiction stuff. Where's that at? Sort of thing. Oh, actually, me and Brent, it's, this is actually really cool to be touring so much with Mastodon. We've been doing a lot of touring with Mastodon and then being in here with Grant we the other night in the hotel when we were working on it which is such a great thing that technology has brought us to that point where we can actually <laughs> make music just on the road or whatever are you guys feeling kind of inspired at the moment yeah you know what I actually think there's like some kind of electricity in the air recently that it everything feels really really good we have a lot of really positive momentum and a lot of really like uh, there's a lot of excitement in the band and I think as, as people we see uh, eye to eye not eye to eye but like I, I feel like we're like we have a, a we're in a better phase of our personal relationship, yeah. you know, which I think is making uh, creativity really exciting. Yeah, because that was that, that whole thing about, you know. More like eye to brown eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But, uh, you know, you spend so much time, like, we grew up together, man. Yeah. Like, you know, like, and you don't realize it's happening because we've been in the band together for 10 years, but, like, I was 21 years old and he was, like, 24 or something like that. But we're kids, you know? I'm 19. Yeah. I'm 19. <laughs> You're like Black Veil Brides. Uh, yeah, it's like Black Veil Penises. Um, you know, uh, we're like you said, we're both strong-minded people, and you know, he started the band, so it's like he has a certain vision, mm. and you know, it's it's very, and it's like I'm naturally super strong-willed and have a certain thing, and don't like to be told what to do, and we're yeah. uh, eventually you're just like shit, man. The reason why we are what we are is because of our individual strengths and personality. Well, definitely. And right. I'm a very sensory person, you know. Yeah. So whether it's like listening I to music think. or working out or being really physical on stage or fucking, you know drugs or sex or whatever it is like I feel like there's a, I'm very sensory oriented you know and uh, I get a lot out of extremes I don't get any a lot of out of moderation and and I feel like I need to go really off somewhere whether yeah. Hunter S. Thompson style yeah exa- you know, it really is that way gonzo journalism in life. Yeah, yeah. you know you just kind of got to wing it and know that you're gonna land on your feet yeah. about everything in life and that's even when you leap into the stage and stuff and like jump off a giant yeah, th- it, drum it riser exa- and I ex- yeah. feel like life to me is exactly the same as I play on stage when, and that's probably not that good for me on the long run, you know, but it seems to be working. So, Excellent. Uh, yeah. Well, kick ass. How about you? How do you, when you feel like most, like, creative? Well, when for me, you feel inspiration most is yeah. the most important thing and not to me how that person got there. So, for, like, mm. for instance, like, I love being inspired by people. Mm. Like, I love whatever it is. I'm like, holy shit, that inspires me so much. I want to write, I want to do this. I don't care if it was, like, just because they worked really hard or they took a drug once, or they fucking, you know, you know. Whatever. To me, it's not about being the sponge; it's about being the ocean. Yeah. And uh, an ocean doesn't know it's an ocean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it just exactly. is. It's just something special about it. And so, essentially, you know I mean? yeah. Essentially, you guys share that it's actually all about being in the moment. However, you get there. Exactly. Right. So. And that's like, actually me, your I, commonality. I have no problem with how people get there, but it's more important that I get something out of it. For them. Yeah. I don't care how they got there, but what they did with it that inspires me is like special. So I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about a book you read or somebody you heard on YouTube about it. I don't want to hear about the Show f- me scientists. For your yeah, output, I don't care you know? how you got there. Uh, I just, um, I'm, I'm, I love being inspired by other people and, and other things and other And passion, the things they create? And yeah. things they create and passion and the philosophies. And not the philosophies that they reiterate from reading somewhere, just the way they are as a person, their aura, the way they come off. and. So for me, that's like the most exciting thing about what we do, and mm. like, it, it, and to me, it's like, it's it's just what's all about. I mean, yeah, it's, definitely. It's just sick.